early retirement. Um, the two districts offer identical early retirement incentives. Um, and if you remember the guidelines um, for full-time employees um, at least 55 years of age by June 30th, the year in which they're going to retire, we have completed 20 years um, service as a licensed employee in either the FAC district, Squaw Lake Auburn district, Wall Lake district, Lake Auburn, or East Fat County schools. And um, I'd like to recommend that you accept the resignations, this will be to the staff board, first of all, resignations with Melody Baker, Jean uh, Whitaking, and Sega Brookhoffer. And they each meet the guidelines for early retirement that's being offered by policy. So moved. To second? Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. The discussion I have is we've, we've done this before and we've always taken the money out of the management fund, is that correct? Um, I, our management fund right now is like fifty four thousand dollars and I know there's insurance stuff that comes out of that too, so I would just say that we probably need to look at, it doesn't have to come out of management fund, it can come out of general fund too, so just to, we need to probably revisit exactly where we're going to take the money and make sure there's enough in there. That's my own discussion. Any input from Frank on that? Or? Okay. okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. And all those opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Do we um, thank some of these people for their many years of service somehow? Yep, I sure hope so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In fact, after while I think Robert uh, takes care of it, I'm just going to share a little bit with you about it. Okay. okay. Um, well, like the Auburn Board, I'd like you to, to accept the resignation from Aaron Williams and Nancy Meredith, and they too need the guidelines for early retirement. I'll make a motion. Okay, we have a motion to second it. Okay. 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 Carlin Williams, who looks at Meredith, to participate in the Early Retirement Program. Aye. 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 Opposed? Chairs. And those five people, um, there are over 140 years of service wow. um, to the school district, and um, that wouldn't count if they had ever worked in any districts other than the, the districts listed um, in the Early Retirement Program. Um, I think that um, when you have a chance to see any one of those three, and some of you won't know some of them from the district, <coughs> district, but Melody is currently a fourth grade teacher, elementary teacher, um, in the fact district, um, Jane is currently a second grade teacher, um, pregnant, a high school um, language arts and English teacher, Arlen, high school language arts and English, we don't have much left of that department, by the way, and Nipsey is a kindergarten teacher at the Fall Lake building. And, um, you know, as enjoyable as it is to come to some sort of agreement where you can offer um, something to teachers as an incentive, knowing that it has to do with some fiscal responsibility you have, um, the loss that you have is when you look at these five people. And um, in most cases, and we'll have to work through that between this month and next month, uh, we'll be looking at rehiring, but we'll rehire more than likely less experienced teachers, which is a cost savings to the district, but it's just different, you know, when a teacher with teachers with less experience comes into our classroom. So if you get a chance, um, please make sure that you say something. This was hard for all five of them. Um, in fact, uh, a couple of them, it was right up to the day, and they were like, man, I hope I'm doing the right thing. And I said, well, before the board meeting on the 11th, you could probably still put your paperwork in now, <laughs> or before the board letter is written. But I think they've come to feel okay about it, and I know they'd like to hear from you if you, if you get a chance to say something, or do something at the end of the school year to honor them. But it's a, you know, we have family members go through retirement or can we have grandparents or whatever, and it's just a hard decision. So um, please pass that on to them. Um, some comments that I've made underneath that, because what you're wondering next is, so well, then what happens? Um, on the staff master contract, um, it's the language of the contract determines that teachers that are reduced are eligible for recall for up to two years only if they possess the necessary licensure and if they have taught in that category that's vacated. Category means um, the language that we have in the master contract, like K-6 teacher, 712 English, 712 A, 
712 means that there are categories of teachers. The stock master contract says if you were reduced last year, you're eligible for recall if you have both the licensure and if you actually taught in that particular category before. It's different with Wallach Lake Auburn language. The language of the master contract in Wallach Lake Auburn says you simply have to be currently, uh, you have to have been reduced uh, through attrition and you have to have the right licensure. So, so then recall looks a little different from one district to the other district. Um, <coughs> there aren't any eligible candidates in, in fact for recall, but there, the very first thing that will happen is we'll have voluntary transfer opened up because master contracts in both districts say that when we have a vacancy, we, we post a vacancy. And the first people that have an opportunity at that vacancy are people within, within the district. Okay, so tomorrow we'll post the openings for the staff teachers who take in retirement because we're going to need to replace those teachers. And the very first thing that can happen is that teachers who have the right licensure, okay, 7, 12, English, or K, 8, elementary, um, can apply to for a transfer to those positions. At that point, really, the language in those ma master contracts says for voluntary transfer that management has a lot of right to make decisions about whether that's good for the district to transfer someone. So if you've got someone in a hard-to-fill area and they want to transfer into an elementary position, you really have to think about whether that's the best thing for the district. Because if they're a good employee in a hard-to-fill area, and if you know you'll have 100 applications for an elementary position, what's best for the district? Okay? And, that really, and it isn't meant to be harmful or hurtful to the employee. But management's obligation is to fill the position with the best candidates following the master contract. And that's our obligation to look at. So how hard is it to find some sorts of teachers in some categories? Okay. Now, while at Auburn, um, the two positions will have to be refilled, um, and recall will take place. In fact, I have appointments tomorrow with two uh, teachers that were reduced on Wallach Pugh Auburn contracts last year that are eligible for recall, and I'll just talk them through what that process is. And those teachers don't have to have experience in the category in which the openings occur. Then after that, we'll determine if there are still openings, and then there would be voluntary transfer. Um, but what I wanted you to understand is it is different for the two districts. And there's just a little glitch there that's different, but it can look on the outside like, well, why are they letting Lake Auburn do this? Because that can't do that. Well, it's because of the language of the contract. And you know what? perfectly fine to have the language like that. Someday it's going to be the same language, whatever it is. But right now it's not. And I'm confident that I understand the language and that I've sat down with principals and looked through who the candidates are, who we've reduced, and we know we've got all of that straightened out. In fact, I have a sheet of paper. I have it all kind of written by district about what the order of this will be. But as that goes on, I'll let you guys know. Um, we haven't determined exactly the numbers of sections we're going to need in every grade in every one of our elementary yet. Um, we may do a little under hiring just to be careful again because there's lots of movement of kids in and out just before school starts. And you could have 24 kids in a grade and then all of a sudden have 18 or 19. Or you can have 24 and what we'd love to have would be like 34 then when the school gets started. So we'll be a little bit cautious about that, but um, by that March board meeting, I'll be able to tell you more about sections and numbers of sections that we'll have. And if you remember, our enrollment went up a little bit overall for the, the two districts last year. Um, and so we, we'll have some of that to consider. We have a large eighth grade class moving to high school, and there'll be some issues that we have to deal with with that about more section sizes. We've got our largest high school class, and then our sophomore class next year will be the smallest high school, smallest class actually in the whole school district. So that presents some problems with how many section sizes with some of those core classes that we have. But Kevin and I have talked about that. He and Jen and I are meeting next week to kind of talk to the last of what that staffing might look like. But um, this puts us in very good shape to look at some things that will be good for the district too. So.